How is everyone doing? Uh, it's been a minute since I've done a video, uh, a tutorial here. So I'm um, glad to be back. Today I'm going to do something different. A lot of people have been asking about how to use the machine controller to work with Ableton the same way that I did the tutorial for Logic. So I'm doing one today. Um, and I've been doing some really cool stuff on another note. Uh, Tractor just dropped their new sequencer. Uh, deck as well to the stem deck they had and the remix deck so i've been doing a lot of playing with that i will be doing a tutorial on that which i got a pretty cool setup for as well so as always let's get to it you can catch me online wordpress uh, learn all your softwares that wordpress and let's do it here we go so here i have my uh live launch and the first thing we want to do before we even um get into launching live is we want to set up a couple of things in the background so i'll go into my finder and show you guys where that is the first thing we want to do is we want to go to the applications folder here go over to native instruments as you can see here i've already done a lot of the um setup so i won't have to take so long to, uh, showing you guys then i go to controller editor here i go into whoops here we go template support files Click on that and we're going to go over to the Ableton Live 9 version and there depending on which machine you have is the one you're going to copy over to Ableton. Okay, so um, I have two. I have the Micro Machine MK2 and I have the Machine MK2. So I, I actually copied both of them. You can highlight them both and hit Command C to copy. Or you can simply drag them over if you like. I prefer Command C, it copies it, and then I can put it anywhere else. Then the next thing we want to do, okay, once we've copied them, is we're going to go back to the Applications folder, which I've done here, Applications, okay, and we want to go over to the Ableton Live that we have, and we want to Control click on it, okay, and we want to go Show Package Contents. So we're going under the hood of Ableton Live 9 to be able to put those scripts into the program itself. Okay, show package contents. We're gonna open that up. Okay, we're gonna go into the contents folder and we're going to go into app resources folder. Okay, then we're gonna go over to the MIDI remote scripts on there. And this is where we'll be uh, placing them, copying them over to. So if you hit command V as in Victor or victory or whichever you like, you can copy them over in there and as you can see on mine I've already done it on mine Michael MK2 and Michael MK uh, the Michael and the regular MK2 okay once we've done that then we can launch Ableton I have a lot of plugins on mine it usually takes a long time for my software to load up so I didn't really wanna uh, do it live with you guys I think you guys are pretty uh, savvy with your uh, stuff as well so I don't think there was a need for that so I've done all that. Now the next thing we want to do once we launch live is we want to go into the preferences, okay? We can go the long way here, preferences. I prefer to use shortcuts. I've always tell you guys on my videos. So we're going to hit command comma and we're going to open up the preferences and we're going to go right here into the link MIDI tab and we're going to look at the control surfaces. On here, if I've already set it up as well, now you'll see that the MK Micro 2 and the MK and the MK2 machine options will come up now as options for you to select the control surface. Okay. Once you've done that, select whichever one you have. Then you're going to go on here and you're going to select the virtual input option, not the controller, but the virtual input option. Here as well, the virtual output option. Cool. And now at the bottom, what we want to do is we also want to turn on the track and the remote option for it on both the ins and the outs. Okay. Once you've done that, then you can, I'll leave it a little bit open just in case you guys want to take a screenshot. Okay. And now we're just going to close out of there. And there we have this set up. So let's give it a test run. I have my machine here and I'm going to hit play. Okay. And it should start my software. And as you guys can see, it started my software. I'll turn on my click so you guys can hear it as well. Here we go. Okay, now let's hit stop. Fantastic. Now, how do we get machine to 
work here. Uh, we're going to take, uh, open this up here. I'm going to scroll over to my plugins, audio units or BST, whichever format you prefer. Go to Native Instruments on there. We're going to select Machine. Okay, so here we are. We have Open Up Machine. Um, and as you can see, when you um, open up Machine, it will um, go back, uh, the controller will change into the plug-in mode, obviously, and that's not what we want to do here. But in any case, let's set up Machine quickly. Let's set up a couple, two groups in Machine. Let's open up this quickly here. Uh, we'll grab Machine here quickly. Let's do a 909. It's the fastest. Let's go to the second one. Let's create something that's a little different that might have some vocals so we can hear the difference. All the way at the bottom here, this one has vocals. And as we know, 909 kick, we have to give them different MIDI channels, okay? Prior to doing that, if we want to hit control, we can go on there and make sure that the groups, MIDI bash setups are set up to MIDI channels, sounds to MIDI channels, okay? Now, here we are, we're in group. We're going to go into the input mode here, select this tab up here, input mode, and the first group will be set, let's turn it on, and it will be set to MIDI channel one, the root node is C1, as you can see. Okay, second group, we're still in group, input, let's turn it on, and this one will be set to MIDI channel two, let's take a look over there, and the root node of that group also starts at C1. So we look pretty good there, let's close this out, now let's go over to, let's create a new MIDI track. Okay, let's get rid of that. Send and return, we don't need to see those right now. Okay, let's go on here and put the inputs and output. Now what we wanna tell this MIDI channel is that we wanna trigger this machine here. Okay, so we're gonna say send the MIDI to MIDI channel to machine, the plugin that we just opened up. And let's do MIDI channel one. You see all the MIDI channels there are, 16 to MIDI channel to machine 2. We're going to select the first MIDI channel and it was 909. Okay. The next thing we want to do is record and gauge the track. And now we're going to go over to our controller and let's take a look here at something. We want to put this controller on MIDI mode and the way we do that is we hold shift and we go all the way to the top and we hit MIDI. Okay. The black, when you, the black behind the knobs is what actually shift corresponds to. So it's MIDI, not control, even though, yeah, it's easiest to say control, but yeah, let's do that. Okay, as you can see, my template now is set to template number one, okay? If you have a few templates, if you hold on there, you can switch between them. That one is Ableton Live 9. That's Mackie Control, a few of them. I made my own, so it's called template one, okay? And there is a default one that's called template one. I only set up three groups for it, but I think the template one that comes with uh, default in the Mackie controller itself has all of them. Okay, now let's talk about these uh, groups for a second. These are actually octaves, okay? The first octave starts at C negative one. This one is C zero, and this one is C one. If you remember when I was showing you guys the groups, they were set to C one. So we want this to be at C one, okay? That way, when we hit the keyboard, you see that? It's starting from C1. Let's go down the line. Okay. Now, let's go back to the software. Let's change it to MIDI channel 2. Okay. So there you have it. It's as simple as that. Uh, now you can program your MIDI in Ableton and not in Machine. And let's do a quick one. Let's go back to MIDI channel one here on my controller. Okay, uh, my click might be too loud, but uh, bear with me. I'm gonna turn it down now here so it won't hurt our ears. Uh, let's do a tempo there and let's do a quick. We can stop it here, okay. Let's take a look at the clip here quickly. Okay, let's make it two bars because that's what I played. So like go, let's quantize it quickly. And let's see how that looks. Looks pretty good. 
Let's put it in overdub mode. Still in overdub mode. We'll stop it. We'll create another new MIDI track now. See how simple it is. In this MIDI track, same deal. Machine 2. We'll send it on there. We'll do MIDI channel 2. On there, let's create a click on our uh, let's recording gauge it. Let's listen. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, let, to lower your volumes, let's go to machine just to lower that second group because it's a little too loud there. Blah, blah, blah. Fantastic. Let's close it out. Maybe channel two. <laughs> craziness for a minute and let's see what we recorded that at okay it could make that just five bars on there let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on <laughs> So pretty much there you have it, nothing fancy, nothing super uh, out of the ordinary. If you have any questions as always, feel free to reach out. Um, also, a quick note on that, before we leave, I'm going to leave you with something else that's pretty cool. Uh, some people are wondering if it'll work the same for drum racks. Yes, it will work the same for drum racks. We're going to go into the drum rack. I'm going to quickly put a drum rack there. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, let's grab a couple of sounds. Let's go in here, anywhere. Just grab, you know what? Let's grab this here and put a 707 in there. Drop a couple of drum sounds in there for us. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to go here. Same deal. Let's close this out. Let's create a MIDI track. And this MIDI track, we'll assign it to the drum rack which is core 707. Okay, let's put it next to that so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, and we'll put this there, okay. So it also works for the drum racks the same way. Nothing in particular, you can record something. Let's turn off this crazy Kida stuff. Take a look at that MIDI as well. Make this guy a little bit smaller. Let's close this guy out. Cool. And let's see that. Okay, that looks good. Let's make it two bars only. And let's have a listen. And just like that, I hope you guys enjoy the video, a little craziness uh, in the beat department, but the whole objective is to get you guys going so you guys can create some super awesome stuff. And as always, this is Josie Carr. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys later.